I'm walking out stronger. I'm walking out better. Better than when I came. Hey, help me sing, y'all. I'm walking out free. Yes, sir. I'm walking out stronger. Walking out better. I'm walking out better. Better than when I came. I'm walking out free. I'm walking out stronger. I'm walking out better. Better than when I came. Let's give God Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because we're better in Christ Jesus. We're better in Christ Jesus. Ah, that's why we're going to be better. Because we got him inside. And we practice him every day. Hey, and we worship him every day. That's how you get better. That's how you stay better. Hey! Hallelujah. Father, we direct this prayer unto you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we may be better people that serve you and worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we worship you, and God, we adore you, and we appreciate you and how we worship you in songs and prayer and dancing and giving offering unto you, showing you how much we love you, showing how much we trust you, showing how much we dedicate our life to you. God, because you are our own, we cannot do nothing without you. The house cannot be built without you. The praise and worship will not go without you. If it's not for you, Lord, hey, we can't serve you. Hey, God, here we are one more time. One more time. At your face, Lord, bow in our spiritual knees before you. Hey, God, we love you. We adore you. We appreciate you. We give you the glory. Hey, and we give you the honor. Hey, God, oh, all over this world, all over. Hear our cry, hear our groan, hear our supplication. Hey, Father, you got to move for your children. You got to touch your children. And we want to say thank you for your son, Jesus. We want to say thank you, hey, for salvation. Hey! For holiness, hey, for the Holy Ghost, we wanna say thank you. Hey, for your love, for your love. If we don't love, we don't know you. Hey, cause you are love. You are love. You are love. You are joy. You are joy. You are peace. Hey, you are a healer. Hey, you are a bringer. Hey, you are a salvation. Hey, hey God. Hey. I want to tell you. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you one more time. Hey, for let us come into the house of God. Hey, come in looking for something from God. Hey, needing something from your Lord. Not a show. Not an act. Not pretending. But I need you. Your people need you. Hey. We want you, God. We want you, God. Want to be real, uh, want to be true, uh, want to be holy, 
want to be righteousness, uh, want to be a witness uh, woo, for you, God. Break every oak, uh, loose every bound, uh, set the captain free, uh, hey, deliver the mind, uh, sin sick mind, uh, sin sick soul, uh, sin sick spirit, uh, heal God, heal Lord, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thou art the God of deliverer. You deliver from anything we want to deliver. If we really want it, if we really need it, if we really realize God, it's all about you. It's not about our flesh. Kill this flesh in us. Crucify it in the blood. In the blood. Your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our Father, we're child in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Let thy kingdom come in our life. Let it come in our life. As we lay down, God. As we go in our homes, God. Touch those who are able to come. Those who was not God. But let thy kingdom come. In our heart, in our mind. In our soul, God. Thy kingdom, God. Thy kingdom, God. Hey, God, thy kingdom. In my life. Hey, my name is Lift your hands, everybody. Open your mouth and tell God you love him. Tell God thank you. Tell God thank you. Tell God I need you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift both hands. Lift your hands before God. And tell God I love you. God, I bless you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, that's in me. I bless your holy name. Now put a seal on the church. Put a seal on it. You walked in here. You can show praise. You go in the nightclub and you praise him. Oh, you got saved.
time. It's offer time in the house of God. It's offer time in the house of God. Come on, you might as well sow while the water is troubled. You might as well put your seed in the ground. All my $100 faithful supporters, those of you that have joined me that are standing with me with a seed of $100. Come on, you can make your way at this time. If you join us via Cyber Sanctuary, you can sow also. You can sow by cash app, dollar sign, GPC, Mabin. You can sow by texting in, text the number 77977. Text the words GPC, NC to the number 77977. You can PayPal for it, slash Grace and Peace Cathedral. You can go by the World Wide Web at gpcnc.org. Hit the icon that says so here and grow here. You can sow by that way as well. If you're not that technology savvy, technically savvy, you can mail that seat in to 600 East Washington Street, maybe North Carolina, amen, 27302, amen. If you in the cathedral, you can sow by Samsung Pay, Android Pay, Apple Pay, and Google Pay, amen, all major and minor credit cards, amen. If you write the check, make sure it's saved and, saved and signified and filled at the bank, amen. You can all, cash is always preferable. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, those $50 faithful supporters, you can make your way. Make your way, make your way, make your way. Make your way. Yes, sir. Amen, praise God. Praise God for the tambourine ministry this morning.
spiritual arsenal with great tools of the word that will prepare us for an even better tomorrow. Please visit our media department to purchase your CDs and DVDs today. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to go by our website at gpcnc.org for all the latest updates and to purchase merchandise. Full Bank Community Giveaway every second Monday at 2.30 p.m. and every fourth Tuesday at 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Partakers, SOP, Sisters of Prayer will meet every first Saturday of each month at 10 a.m. To all partakers, we are trying to reach our goal when it comes to winning souls. We ask that each one reach one by being a witness and handing out a church flyer at least two a day. Ask the Lord to guide your day to be a witness and invite someone to our church. Remember, a church alive is worth the drive. Partakers, remember Monday is half a day consecration for our pastor, Bishop A.D. Clyburn. For we are partakers committed to consecration for our past. Please remember your dues and other responsibilities. If you see or hear something you like, please tell someone. If you see or hear something that you don't like, please tell us. Please keep these directives in mind and govern yourself accordingly. Church, the old time way, how they would sing and how they would go. 
adjust from last year to this year. Your focus has to be adjusted. What has your focus? What are you focusing on? What has your attention? In bright light, the pupil contracts or to reduce the amount of light entering into the eye. And in a dim light, it dilates, allowing more light to come in. It knows how to adjust. The tear production plays a virtual role in maintaining eyes help by lubricating the surface uh, of the eye and washing away debris so it's good for you to cry sometimes it keeps vision clear it keeps the eye clean it washes away debris but when you cry it cleanses not only the soul but it cleanses your perception because now you see people for who they really are this verse in psalms 23 acknowledged the reality of facing dark challenges it emphasized of the unwavering presence of god as a source of comfort and guidance in difficult times and moments is sometimes when things are dark is when you really learn how to see there's nothing like seeing in a dark place that's why when you're in a dark place you can't look with the natural eye but that single eye must be wide open you must be led through the auspices of the Holy Spirit that God can bring you in and bring you out without you bumping into everything in a dark place. In 2024, you're going to have to trust God and look to Jesus while he's opening doors and you're walking. God said, I'm going to heal your perspective. See, some folks' perspective is limited because of no vision. Uh, writing the vision hey, open up your perspective don't just write notes but almost do a vision board touch your neighbor and say I gotta write it clearly from my perspective God will bind the Bible God will hinder the hinderer from opposing the will of him in your life. Amen of God. Touch your neighbor and say, this is the year that you got to seek God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our senior pastor, Bishop Aaron D. Clyde. Oh, clap your hands and give God praise, everybody. He's an awesome God. He's omnipotent and powerful. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. 
Clap your hands like you're sanctified, like you love Jesus. He's an awesome God. There's no God like our God. If you believe it, clap your hands and give him more praise. If he made a way for you, clap your hands and give him more praise. If he made a horseshit, if he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light, come on, clap your hand and give him some more praise. If he's your Lord and Savior and coming again to redeem us and rapture us, clap your hand and give him some more praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. Certainly the Lord is an awesome God and we thank him again for this awesome new Sabbath day, cold day, but it's a Sabbath day which we came to give him glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to talk to you this morning. Glory be unto God because he's an awesome God. Touch your neighbor say this is the year to stay focused. The Lord has been dealing with me about that more than ever before. About staying focused. Somebody say stay focused. Amen. Even when people give you their word and you don't, amen. But touch your neighbor say just stay focused. Amen. The enemy use any kind of tactics to get your mind off, get your perception off, get your vision off. Touch your neighbor say stay focused. Amen. And stay diligent. I promise you, thanks of God, as long as you stay focused and diligent this year, glory be unto God, you're going to see heights unknown. He's going to take you places that you could, you've could, been dreaming about. Amen. Places that you've been praying about. Amen. It's about your commitment and your, amen, your covenant with God. Somebody say amen. Some people say they have covenant, but they don't have commitment. Amen of God. And it's important for you to have covenant and be committed. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, be committed. When you're committed, you get up in 17, 13 degree weather and start getting ready for church. And head on, go outside and crank your car. Get it warm. And anything going wrong, the cold going to let you know about it. Amen of God. Amen. Tesla cars won't even crank in the cold. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So, amen. We just thank God I got something that'll crank up. Not only crank up, but heat up. Amen. So you ought to be glad you got something to heat up. Some of you got heated seats and heated steering wheels. I took a car back because it didn't have a heated steering wheel. Yes, I did. I don't care how high it is. Amen. I need you to heat up. Amen. I need my. I don't need no isotoner. You pay too much to wear isotoner. Amen. I need this steering wheel to heat up. Somebody say amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going. We're going to do part two. As you heard in the recap, amen, looking unto Jesus. But I want to talk about, amen, uh, just for a situation text this morning. Can you say vision and perception? Uh -huh. Vision and perception. We're going to start it this Sunday, but I'm a, it's probably going to be a continuation because I'm going to dig more into it on next week. A man of God, vision and uh, perception. Can you say vision? Vision is the act or the power of seeing. Vision means sight. That special sense which quali uh, which quali uh, qualities of an object such as color, a man shape size, amen, uh, constructing its appearance and proceed through the process which light rays entering into the eye are performed by the rating into electric signals that are transmitted to the brain via the octave nerve. Somebody say vision. Sing, our vision also means seeing in a dream, uh, a trance, uh, especially the supernatural appearances that convey, conveys a revelation. Vision, old men dream dreams and young men see visions. Uh, somebody say vision. The manifestation to uh, the senses of something 
in material uh, the look which is relative, the act of the power of imagination, the act or the power of imagination. That's what the Bible says, casting down every vain imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Somebody say vision. Now, when we look at perspective, amen of God, it is the result of perceiving, observing, observation, a mental image, uh, the concept, how you conceive, uh, the consciousness, awareness of elements or environment through physical sensation. A uh, color perception, physical sensation interpreted in the light of experience. People perceive things because of past experience. Oh, touch your neighbor, say, you talking already. And I haven't even started preaching yet. Amen of God, amen of God. Physical mm, sensation interpreted, uh, help me here, the light of experience. Um, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to talk to you this morning about the importance of vision, give me a little clear, and perception through faith or in faith. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, let's go with me quickly to Proverbs chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3. And let's look at verses 5 through verses 6. And it reads as thus. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Mm -hmm. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Lean not until thine own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all thy ways acknowledge him, mm -hmm. and he shall direct thy path. Vision and perspective play a critical role through, our, through faith. Uh, shaping the way, can y'all help me with this microphone? I don't like it. Uh, the way believers understand God's plan, the purpose, and the presence in their lives. Here are key aspects, aspects highlighting the importance of vision and perception through faith. It's all how you perceive through faith. See, uh, uh, this scripture or guidance of dire and direction, trust of the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and all thy ways submit to him. Touch your neighbor saying, in all thy ways, submit. Uh -huh. A lot of us don't like submission, but we love the rule. Amen. We don't love to submit one to another. Sometimes, or oh, maybe because of past experiences. of how, See that perception of how you were done, or how ancestors were done, how mama was done, how we were treated as a people. Are you listening to me? So sometimes, amen, we have uh, a problem submitting. And then sometimes you see people submitting um, yet again, and you say, well, how they can submit to this older culture, but they can't submit to their own. Perhaps that's be how, because of perception of past experiences, that somewhere in them unknowingly, uh, that they, it's easy to submit to another culture than their own. Oh, Lord, help us uh, to submit to him and make our path straight. Uh, so as we uh, trust in the Lord with all of thy heart and lean not to our understanding, submit to him, he makes our path straight. He makes, when you submit to God's way, he makes what your path straight, what was crooked, what was line what was out of sync he straightens it out amen of god for your path uh, 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 
somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Having clear vision also allow believers to trust God's guidance. Seeking his direction in every aspect of life. Perception enables discernment to follow the path aligned with God's will. Your perception. I've been dealing, amen of God. I've been talking to some different individuals, people, concerning their perception on how they perceive. Uh, I, it's, it's often when I counsel pastors, I told the pastor I'm counseling you, but you get benefits that you're not submitted to. Mm. I always call you for advice, but can't submit under your bishopric. Always. Amen. Because they have a problem submitting. Because perhaps their mother had a problem submitting. And see, there's perception again. And, it's a, and if you're not careful, what is done one place turns into a habit becomes, turns into a spirit. And if you're not careful, that habit becomes a spirit. And that spirit is transferable. Uh, I said spirits are transferable. And you wonder why people in your organ, your, your, your local assembly is having problems submitting because you as a pastor had a problem submitting. So therefore, you reap what you have sown. And then sometimes we feel like we have been done unfair. And we see how it happened for someone else. But what you didn't see is what they did to receive what they received. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody say, it's your, percep it's your perception. How you see things will, uh, uh, in, um, uh, will alter how you live. How you see or perceive will alter how you handle situations, which alter often can alter your end result. Am I talking good already? Uh, uh, somebody say hope and purpose. Let's go to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. What do it say? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Uh -huh. And to give you an expected end. I know the plan. See, the thoughts are the plans. The thoughts are the plans, write the vision, write the plan, write the thoughts. The thought are the plans, write the vision, write how you proceed, write your thoughts, write the plan. Some of y'all ain't even saying amen and you couldn't even write. Somebody say amen. You got to write the, <laughs> it's your perception, perception. Somebody say perception. I know the plans that I have for you, the desires of the Lord, for the plans for welfare and not of evil to give you future, to give you a future, to, is to give you a what? A high is to give you a future and a hope. Vision instills hope by unveiling God's purpose for each individual. Let me say it again for those of you that can't hear me. Vision instills hope by unveiling. It unveils. It lifts the mask. It, 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 it lifts what you couldn't see. Uh -huh. It unveils God's purpose for each individual. Perception helps believers to recognize by unfolding God's plan. You know it's a towel, but you don't know how big it is. And you don't know what's all on the towel. Until it has been unfolded and then revealed. Some things have to be unfolded. That's why the Bible proverb says, a foolish man answers the matter before he hears the end result. 
because it hasn't all been unfolded. You may think you know what's about to be said, but you need to wait until it's unfolded so you can have clear perception. That way you can see clearly in your mind's eye or spirit what this conversation is really about. Somebody shout, help us, Lord. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Perception helps believers recognize the unfolding of God's plan, even in challenging circumstances. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Uh, we're still talking about a vision and perception. Read. While we look not at things which are seen, mm -hmm. but at the things which are not seen. Uh -huh. For things which are seen are temporal, but things which are not seen are eternal. So we, we, so we fix our eyes not on things which are seen. See, because if that's the case, we would worship a God that we could see. See, the spiritual world could be seen with the natural eye, but it is not. So we don't look at things which are, we look at things which are not seen. We, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. And it, <coughs> what is unseen is eternal. That's why you got to look beyond what you see and look at the spirit of it. Mm-hmm. That's why when people talk, I don't just hear what they say, and I'm looking at the spirit of this. Where is this uh, uh, drawn from? And so you can, I can have the same conversation with you and have another, the same conversation with you, and both of you all will have a different conclusion uh, uh, because of your perception of what you're dealing with. Same situation. Two different people, two different perspective, two different experiences. That's why when I talk to people, I have to bring myself down and put myself almost in a counseling position to where I don't become offensive unless I'm dealing with an offensive spirit. Amen of God, because then you got to almost walk two lines, counsel and spiritual. And so when I hit that spirit, then I can give you on a bed ease or provoke your thought to come in a different way. So we have to provoke you to think at it from a different perspective so you can see it differently. Sometimes if you don't see it, if you're looking at it in a way Sometimes it's not meant you can be offended. But if your perception is from a different glance, it won't offend you, but it'll help you. Am I talking good? So you won't look at it as an offense. You look at it as thank God for help. And why did nobody help me? Uh -huh, because I was looking at it from a different perception. And perception is limited by who you hang around. Did this mic go out? I said perception is limited by who you hang around. You don't believe it? I'm going to help you. You'll think about money different when you start hanging around millionaires and they tell you how to get stuff. Because your mindset changed. I used to thought a millionaire had a million dollars. That ain't so. Amen. Some millionaires don't even have a million dollars. They got a million dollar worth of stuff. I can't get no help here. <laughs> but multi-millionaire got the millionaire and the stuff. I was talking to somebody. I said, do y'all know so-and-so is a billionaire? I can't call the name right now. And uh, they said, oh, uh, he ain't no billionaire. And this is a person who loves to think who, and that's good, to love us to think. His net worth is so many million of dollars. And I said, if you believe that's something wrong with you. 
I don't care what that computer said. You know why I know? Because when they made movies, they made one point so many billion. When they wrote books, they wrote so many million off one book. Their church take in millions every Sunday, not a month. So therefore, that person is a billionaire. Well, this ain't what it said. I said, this is calculating everything that's in their name. Millionaires don't keep everything in their name. Perception. They have trust. Some things are in trust. Some stuff is in a business name, which is theirs, and it's called a holding. Clyburn Holdings. Clyburn Enterprise. Uh, they, they don't put everything in the uh, uh, in a normal saving. They have annuity accounts. So everything, glory to God, that you're seeing, you are not seeing because you don't have clear perception. When you have clear perception, somebody say, when I have clear perception, you have a clearer understanding. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to, God. glory to God. When we're connecting with God, Psalms 42 and 1, as the deer passed it for the water, and I want to say as the deer passed for the strings of water, so does my soul pass for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, uh, for the living God. My soul thirsts. Clear vision cultivates a deep desire for God's presence. See this scripture? Uh, uh, it cultivates, I have a deep desire for the presence of God. I just don't want to come to church and dance. I want to be in his presence. I want, I want him to saturate me. I want him, I want the presence of God. When you enter into the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. So presence of God excommunicates depression, suppression, or depression. Uh -huh. The fullness of joy cancels out what you're going through. Because your perception of what you're going through does not depress you. Because your perception says if he brought me out the last time, I, I can't wait to see how he's going to do it this time. See, uh, I don't get depressed because I'm going through. I know this is temporary. And Lord, if I'm going through this, what is the purpose of me going through this? Lord, I want you to get the glory out of this. And if you get the glory out of this, then I know if you glorify it, then I will be edified. You're going to lift me higher than I am right now for going with, through this. Not only heaven rewards you, but hell has to pay you for coming. Some of you are going to get rewarded twice. Oh, God, some of y'all slow. You'll get it out the wild. Amen to God. Clear vision cultivates a deep desire for God's presence. Perception helps believers to recognize God's work in their life. Fostering a, a profound connection for intimacy with him. Not with everybody else. With him. Some of you design, ooh, I just want somebody just to be intimate with. Not sexually. I mean, uh, there's more ways to be intimate. Uh, 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 closeness, one-on-one. -on -one. That's intimate. A conversation. That's intimate. You're longing for intimacy. And some of you are longing for intimacy in that other area. Uh, but when you get it with God and you let him feel that in, you'll find out that that other desire kind of lingers off. Because you got more of you and less of him. The songwriter says, I want more of you and less of me. See, when you get more of him, and less of you, you'll find out things will run smoother. That little other stuff will come out the wild. Just wait on God and he'll give you something out of the hand of that. I can't get nobody.
Touch your neighbor and say, I, 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 I'm waiting on God. And those of you that are waiting, be intimate with him. Have an intimacy. Where's your prayer life? Where's your uh, consecration? Are you consecrating at least once a week? Are you in your Bible? You should be reading it every day, but at least once a week. Outside of your church days. Well, I don't have so Some of y'all can't even say that. Touch the neighbor say, uh, 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 just touch your neighbor say, uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 you have to have an intimacy with God where you read. The Bible says he got joy out of talking to Adam in the cool of the evening. You should have a daily conversation with God every day. He got, this gave God joy. Wouldn't it give him joy? Don't you want to bring your Lord and Savior joy, your King of Kings? Joy, joy, joy. Don't, I, 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 I didn't say happy because happy comes from happening. But joy is a state of mind. That's why you need joy. That's how you can have joy while you're going through. That's why you can wreck your car, amen to God, and sit there and eat an ice cream cone. Glory to God, because you have full replacement value if you have insurance. Amen, a full replacement value. What you worried about if I go get, pick up a rental car because I have insurance. And I pay my insurance. I pay my insurance so I can be insured. Amen, amen. And when you're in Christ and you have vision and perception, you are, you are insured and reassured through God that he will handle, he said, all things work. How together for the good of them who love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. So when you have vision of the concept of his word, when you see his word in action, it, it will cause you not to handle things the way that you handle it. Amen. You can be right and you can be right, but you can't be right at the same time. Sometimes, amen of God, it's like a, a ball rolling the road and here come a car and the little boy going to get his ball. The ball is his and he's right to go get it, but the car is right to keep coming down the road. Amen, because he has the right of way, but they both can't be right at the same time. Sometimes that right at the same time will cause a collision. Oh, I ain't got, so either one got to slow down and let the other one come or the other one got to stop and wait till the other pass. So you can be right at the same, to be right about what you're talking about, but sometimes you can't be right at the same. It's your perception on how you think will be how you handle situations. And sometimes people have the wrong perception about you. Perhaps they've talked to people. Perhaps they know the old you and don't know the change you because they don't spend time. And it's sad when people do spend time, they, some of them still don't know you. they absent from the mind. That's why it's not good to have absent-minded folk around you. All hearts and minds are clear. Please stand. I No, baby. You better have something on your mind. I need some thinkers around me because the older I get, I find out something, brother musician. Amen. Keep coming. Amen. The older I get, sometimes stuff slip me. And, and, and I be, I say, now I know I got to do this. As soon as I get to the house, I don't forget what I just said. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now I tell people on the phone, now listen, you remind me, text me, especially they mind younger. Your mind shouldn't be bad as mine and you in your 20s. Or your thirties. I ain't got no help here. You should have a little more strength. Your mind old as mine. You hang around too many old folk. Get around some young folk. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They got clear minds. and Because young folk can think. When I was younger, baby, I could think how to get in and out of it. Are y'all listening to me? People called me that was in trouble. Amen. The police was. <laughs> Are y'all listening to me? Said, Prophet, how my Lord, have mercy. I said, Holy Ghost said, Glory to God, and you're going to have the victory. Call me back after it's over. Glory to God. And they came out. You said it. Whoa, you can think. Amen. I said, I had to think in the natural and in the spirit. Amen. I had to have a perception. Am I talking? Am I, am I, am I talking all right? Somebody shout, it's good, it's good already, it's good. 
Uh, our faith in action, James 2 and 7. Go, go with us there real quickly. James 2 and 7. Uh, James 2 and 17. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 let's see what it says. James chapter. Here we are. Read. Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action. So faith has to be accompanied. It has to have his friends. Faith and actions are friends. They're good working buddies. They're work partners. So that's how you have to look at faith and action. They are partners in business together. And you can't have one without the other. Well, you can have it, but you won't have no uh, result. If you want results, you're going to need faith and action. See, I believe God all day long. It wasn't until I had a plan. And I put that plan in action with my faith. See? And sometimes when you putting it in action with your faith, are y'all listening to me? Let me slide this way. With your faith, are y'all listening to me? The devil will try to take your whole mind. When, he <laughs> when you put that action with faith, are y'all listening to me? You will see something. You, 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 when you put that action with your faith, are y'all listening to me? It's, that's when I begin to see the hand of God. And even sometimes then, a little apprehension or a little nervousness. I ain't going to say fear. Because once I recognize, I cast it back down. Because perfect love. Cast out all fear. I'm scared. I'm scared because your love ain't some. Your love is tainted. Your love is tainted. Your love is tainted because perhaps if you received love from someone else whose love was tainted. And so, therefore, here we are. It's the perception of your love and how you received it. So that's why the love that you give off is tainted because that's what you received. Sometimes God has to teach you how to love all over again. And some of you think you're loving and some of that ain't love. Love ain't giving folk what they want all the time. Are you listening to me? Love do for you when you say, uh, uh, when you say I don't want nothing. They're going to do something anyway. That's what love is. L love is nothing until it's given away. Don't tell me you love me and you don't give me nothing. I'm always the one giving. You ever seen somebody in a relationship or a married couple? Amen to God. And I, I, I was married before. Amen to God. I love your necklace. It's just shining, Elder Nixon. I mean, it's just shining. That's nice. I like it. Amen to God. Who shall I mo? Glory to God. Somebody say yes, Lord. And, 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 and I just heard somebody. I kept it to myself. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Oh, my. Uh, uh, somebody shout glory to God. Uh, uh, love is, love is, uh, if you, uh, 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 if I'm always paying for the vacations, well, when is your time to pay for the vacation? We ain't went nowhere. You ain't took me. So it is the law of reciprocity. Maybe perception is you saw someone always taking somebody else. But I'm here to tell you it's a two-way street. Uh, someone gave me some something for Valentine's one day, and I thought she was going to give me something for Valentine's. I said, well, baby, you ain't gave me nothing for Valentine's all these years. Right. Now you want something for Valentine's? Yes. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. Well, a, a Valentine's is a woman's holiday. I said, no, it is not. It's a lover's holiday. And find out I'm the only one loving over here. 
See, see, it took me a little while to get the picture. It don't take me that. You ain't got but one time. I got it. Why? Because I have clear perception. And sometimes you have to, and when you're in business uh, or, or, or whatever you are, you need to, and even in relationship, you need to make sure that who you with have good perception. Because half of your battle is going to be with their mind and not with what y'all got to do. Oh, I said something right there. Are y'all listening to me? Touch your neighbor and say, uh, uh, make sure you have clear perception. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ephesians 6 and 12. Is this good teaching this morning? I pray y'all got y'all dance out earlier. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there and got mine. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there. I was dancing while I was sitting. Some of your knees and stuff and ankles ain't good. Sit there and dance. Uh, you got, I was in a wheelchair sitting right there. Are uh, y'all hearing me? Leg just jacked up like this. And look like the sir, they had better service. But I, I couldn't get, well, I would just cry, just be crying and screaming and hollering because I couldn't get up. But it, it was internalized, it was all inside of me. And I'm hoping to give you shut up. Glory to God. My, it was in my heart. I had a perception about who God is. Ooh. Ephesians 6 and 12 read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, yeah. against powers, against the rulers of darkness uh -huh. of this world. Uh -huh. Against we, spiritual wickedness yeah. in high places. See, we struggle not against flesh and blood. Your struggle shouldn't be against your sister and brother. Right. Some of y'all fighting each other. Right. You wasting strength, time, and energy. You wasting strength, time, and energy. The, uh, we struggle not. Against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world. That's where your, that's where your fight is. That demonic force, that force of the mind. A clear vision helps believers understand the spiritual battle. Perception equips us to discern the enemy tactics that stands firm in faith and relying on God's strength. In essence, vision and perception empowers the believer to navigate their faith journey with confidence, hope, and a deep connection with God as we cultivate a clear vision and sharpen our spiritual perception. Our faith becomes a transformative force in our lives uh, 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 around uh, those that watch us. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Proverbs 29 and 18. Let's go there quickly. I'm almost done. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision... The people, the people perish. perish. God's vision for his people. God has a plan for salvation. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, God's purpose for each individual. Jeremiah 29 and 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. He has plans and he has salvation. So his, he has God's vision for us is the plan of salvation, amen, of God, and the role of perception in faith. Yeah. Psalms 34 and 8, go there quickly. 
Psalms 34 and 8, we see the role of perception in faith, seeing God's hand in our daily lives. What do it say? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, in our daily lives. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. Uh -huh, read. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Oh, taste and see. First, you got to taste. Uh -huh. Then you will see that the master is good. You have to taste and see. Have you had a taste of Jesus? Have you had, what key you in? Have you had a taste? Ha, have you had a taste? Go to E flat. Have you had a taste of Jesus? Uh huh. The old, old, uh, old, 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 old saying said, Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. 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 Save me. He's all right. Praise me. He's all right. Heal me. He's all right. He's all right. me. He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. Touch your neighbor and say he's all right. Amen. I taste and I see. I tried him. And I found him to be all right. Oh, my, 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 my. Touch your neighbor and say, he's all right with me. Amen. You have to taste and see that the Dokomaku Oh, that stirred something up in us, didn't it? I know it's an old song, but my God. Amen. That was when the old saints said, have you tried it? I know it to be all right. Somebody lift your voice and say, all right. All right. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Corinthians. Let me give you this. I got some more points, but this is my third point this morning, and we're going to conclude it here. Uh, the Lord says the same. Uh, uh, 2 Cor Corinthians 4 and 4. <clears throat> Somebody say, he's all right. Yeah. Ah, Lord. <laughs> Read. What did he say? Read it. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which not believe. Uh-huh. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, 
who is the image of God should shine unto them. In whom the God of this world has blinded. In other words, he took the vision. He took their perception of the minds of the unbeliever. That's why they can't never understand why you pay tithe. That's why they never can understand why you dance. It looks foolish to them because their minds have been blinded. They have not tasted nor have they seen. So their perception is, is, is blind. They're, 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 they're mindless. They have no thought. That they, they can't comprehend why you're here jumping and dancing. Well, honey, they ain't got nothing else to do. You know, I, I listen to people. And, and, and they say, well, I was raised in so-and-so. And I listen, I said, mm, you went to church. Some folk went to church. You grew up in church. You weren't raised. You just grew up. And there's a difference in being raised and growing up. Some people raise their children. And some folk children grow up with them. And you can tell the difference between someone that is raised. A raisin, honey. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, raisin is a whole nother deal than growing up. You, 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 you better got to get in this church service. And when you get in this church, don't let me look cross at you. Because if I look cross at you, it's going to be me and you. And if I had to, know you don't. Are you listening to me? And you bet not. See, I bet not got called downstairs. Because I got it at church. And then when I got home. You had to go get your own Dr. Green. She didn't beat clothes. Because clothes. She said I bought clothes. I don't beat clothes. I said well God almighty. Didn't you bring me from the hospital? You brought me from the hospital. <laughs> He has blinded the mind of them that believe not. At least the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should be shining unto them. This is not for the unbeliever. So that's why they're blind. If I didn't blind them, they'll see what you can see. They'll have the wisdom and knowledge that I give unto you. But this is not for them unless they choose me. Some things are only for citizens of heaven. We have certain perks because we are citizens of the United States. And some countries don't like us, but some of them got better sense to mess with us. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Because if you mess too much, we're going to come back at you. And when we come, we ain't coming for you. We're coming for you, your uncle, your grandmama, your dad. See, that's how the United States play. Don't play. Don't. You better look at the news. Baby, they'll drop a bomb on you and your whole family while you sitting there eating, uh, 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 eating lamb and goat. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? There's certain, there are certain benefits that we that are citizens of heaven have. And I want you to know that God is getting ready to drop a bomb on all of your enemies. All of your enemies, such a neighbor say vision and perception. That's why I'm working with you with your vision and perception because this year you can't remain in the same place that you was last year. It's for you to get to moving and get to sh shakers and movers and shot callers. And, oh, y'all don't want to hear me today. Touch your neighbor and say, get yourself together. Get the mud out your eye. Get that moat out of your eye. Clear up your mind. Get your mind together. Because this is the season for you to have. This is the season for you to produce. The devil don't care that you got something. He just don't want you to produce. But when you start producing, you become a threat against the kingdom of darkness. Because who is leaning on the Lord's side? I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Matter of fact, I'm on the Lord's side. I stopped leaning a long time ago. I just came on over. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, when you're on the Lord's side, on the Lord's side heaven will fight for you. Heaven will fight for yeah, you. yeah, 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 yeah. Like
like you fought from Barak and Deborah in the valley of Achor when the stars was in their courses. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me today. And when they was in the valley of Kedron fighting against Jabin's army, a man of God, they got down there. Amen. They was in a battle against army of 900 uh, 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 art shooters. 900 chariots of iron. Thank you. Amen. Of God, three, three riders to each chariot. We ain't talking about wood chariots. We talking about iron chariots. This was a great nation. This was a mighty army. And devil and Barak met down there. They didn't have to fight, but they had to show up. And I stopped by grace and peace this morning now, to tell you this ain't the year you got to fight. But this is the year you're going to show up. You're going to walk through the open door. Keep your eyes on God as they look toward the hills from which come their help. Yeah! The stars and the moon. The moon began to pull on the waters. The waters stood up like lion and took out a whole army. Touch your neighbor say, I'm talking about heaven fighting for you. Hallelujah. When Moses and the children of Israel came through the Red Sea, God congealed the waters and the children of Israel walked across on dry ground and Pharaoh and his army, they got taken out by the move of the hand. The waters crashed down upon them. I'm here to tell you, Grace, that God, somebody wave your right hand and say, God, God, preach me, Jesus. God, he's going to wipe out every one of your enemies as long as you keep vision and your perception locked in on Jesus. Somebody shout, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, clap your hand and give him praise. Come on and give him the praise. Come on and give him the praise. Praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Sonny, if you clap your hands all over the auditorium. Somebody shout vision, vision. And, perception. and perception. Say it again, vision and perception. We're going to be talking about that for the last next couple of weeks. Come on, clap your hand and give God praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank, you. we thank you. I ask you in the name of Jesus to lift the blinders off of those eyes that cannot see father touch their spirit right now touch the eyes of the windows of their souls that they may see you clearly in the name of jesus touch their mind on the right and on the left father that they we may have clear perception of who you are in our lives and who you are in every situation that we deal with. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Come on, clap those hands and give God praise if you believe it. Come on and give him praise if you believe it. Open up your mouth if you believe it. You may be seated. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Touch your neighbor say, I believe God. I feel victory in here. Hey! Hey! Oh, yes, sir. I feel victory in my mind. I feel victory in my spirit. Oh, yeah. 
All right, we're moving. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody touch, look at your neighbor and say, I feel victory in my mind. That's where it need to begin. The victory need to begin in your mind. Why in my mind? Because so a man think it. My God, Koshi, I tell you. So is he. You think you free, you're going to be free. You think you bound, then so be it. You're oh, going through, so be it. But if you're going through, baby, I'm coming out of this. I'm going to be out before you know it. And then start praising him for it. And I'm here to tell you, he'll free you in the midst of it. Walk around, you'll be bound and you'll be free. They wonder why you got to praise and we're going through the same thing. Because I got a different perspective. My perception is different than yours. Because he opened my eyes in the spirit. The blinders are lifted. And I know he's going to reward me for going through this. So I'm praising him for going through and coming out. Oh, some of y'all missed that. I said I praise him for going through and coming out. What God Almighty. Because he's going to reward you for going through. Touch your neighbor and say a double reward is coming to me. Woo! It's your perception. Hallelujah. Everybody. How many bodies? I want you to get a seed on you this morning. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. What you get a seed on you this morning? Somebody say a seed. A seed of fifty-seven dollars. That's not a whole lot of money. I want to stretch your faith. Small seed. Somebody say a small seed of fifty-seven dollars. Well, I brought forty. Put seventeen more with it. Somebody say, get that seed on you this morning. Amen. I may have already sent it. Put the other with it. Put your seed on it this morning. My perception. Why am I saying this? Because my perception is better than it was last Sunday. And I know as I release this seed, God is going to release me in my vision. Your vision is coming to pass. Your vision. Remember how you work for others, how others going to work with you. It's your perception. Uh, uh, that's real, uh, Elder? Somebody said, that's real. Amen, God. We're so excited. We're so excited. It's so good to see you, my dear and the baby. Amen. We sure miss you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Amen. God is so good. So let's get your seeds on you. We're going home. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I thought it was going to be cold in here this morning. We turned the, amen, get those seeds on you. Those of you that are watching via uh, online, uh, the ways to give are on the screen. Those of you that would like to text to give, you could text uh, to 77977. Again, that's 77977. Amen. Uh, in the comment section, you put GPCNC and text it to 77977. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Those of you that are cash apping, you can cash app your seed to GPCNC. Amen. Uh, Mevin, dollar sign GPCNC. GP, GPC Mevin. GPC, we need this stuff up here on these screens so I can see it. GPC, Mevin. Is that right? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. See, amen. I just came out the spirit realm. Stuff got to be up here to help you. <laughs> amen. Is that the cash app? Or those of you that want to give on the World Wide Web, you can go to gpcnc.org. You can give there as well. We have made it affordable for you to be able to give. Somebody say amen. 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 Get your seed and your tithe. Get your seed and your tithe. Get your seed and your tithe. Somebody say amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <coughs> Glory to God. Amen. Get it.
get it on you. Touch your neighbor and say, get it on you. Amen. We ain't broke. Touch your neighbor and say, I ain't broke. Amen. I ain't broke. Amen. I like your shoes, Doc. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. It's nice to be nice. Amen. It's nice to be nice. It don't cost you nothing to be nice. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. What? Yeah, somebody said, Bishop, I'm hungry. I went and bought them. Well, I had them a sandwich brought to a little breakfast sandwich this morning. Amen. 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 It don't cost you nothing to be nice. Amen. 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 It comes back to you. One day, you'll find out. It'll come back when you won't even be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It'll come back to you. And it's a blessing to be good to the poor. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. Amen. I told y'all Tuesday night. I told you another time. And I'm going to tell you till I, I can't talk no more. Amen to God. When you are blessing to someone, amen, that is less fortunate. You see all these individuals? <clears throat> I don't have a problem giving to them. You know why? Because as you lend to the poor, the Bible says you lend to God. And who else better to pay you? Than the man upstairs. The man upstairs. Baby, he going to give you, you know, he's God. He going to give you more than what that little two, little three, four little dollars you gave him. Are right, y'all listening to me? He'll bring your life up. Are you listening to me? Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, it's your vision and perception is how you look at it. Because how you look at it is how you think. <laughs> how you look at it is how you think. <laughs> how you look at it is how you think. And so a man thinketh, so is he. Change your thought pattern. Amen. Amen. Am I talking good? Amen. Get that 57 on you. Amen. Glory to God. Bishop, I don't have 57, but I got 47, 27. Get your, get that seven in it and get it on you there. Get, it, get that seven in it. Amen. That 27. Don't bring no seven. I got $7. You got more than $7. Go between the 10 towers or somewhere. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> Amen. Get it on. Amen. Are you listening to me? Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. See how my perception is? Just keep on moving. Amen. God is going to just keep on moving. Amen. Amen. The Lord is helping me. See, not only he helped you, but he's helping me. So look at stuff and just keep on moving. Amen. Because some stuff you give too much attention and energy to. And it will wear you out. Are y'all listening to me? So you just got to keep on moving. Oh, but uh, don't waste my time with stuff that ain't helping me. <clears throat> am, I, am I talking good? Just keep on moving. Amen. Father, we thank you for the seed and the sword, the gift and the giver. Give it back to your people a hundredfold in Jesus' name.